Good morning, interweb. War Brothers Log 25. Polar distortion. We all hate it. The bane of every single World Builder's existence. Planets are 3D spheres. When you project their surfaces onto a 2D plane, the shape of the land masses distort and transform with respect to whatever projection is being used. Near the equator, this distortion isn't too bad, but up near the poles, it's a disaster. Now, I had said that what we're going to do is we're going to just draw in the map, bring it into G-plates, look at what's going on, visually correct it in Illustrator, rinse and repeat. But literally this weekend, I came across this tutorial by this chap here called Elnu, how to use Blender to paint on a sphere for fantasy maps, which if you're anything like me, was a mouth-watering title to come across. So in this video, I wanna implement Elnu's strategy here. This video is not planned at all. This may be a disaster. So let's just take it as a bit of an experiment. Can we use Blender to do this? Step one, open up Blender. Well, actually step zero will probably be download Blender, but it's 2023. I'm gonna work on an assumption you can use Google and you can find a download link. It's not that difficult. For those who don't know, uh, Blender is a free open source cross-platform 3D, I guess, modeling software. Seems really cool. I know literally nothing about it. I've had one day's experience with it. So here we go. Uh, first things first, we want to click on just new file, just general will do. We have this viewport, how very pretty. There are a number of different ways. I think one can manipulate the viewport, but it depends on your input device, like whether or not your um, mouse has a scroll wheel, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna go for, I think the most universal way of manipulating the viewport and that is up here. You can click on this XYZ axis and you can just twiddle things around. You can zoom by clicking on this little zoom button up here and you can use this hand to pan. And so you can move in 3D space, pretty simple. Now we do not want a cube, that is no good. Planets, not cubes. We're gonna hit X on the keyboard and we're gonna go delete. I'm gonna go up to add here, alternatively hit shift and A. I'm gonna scroll down to mesh and then down to UV sphere. Hey presto, it's a sphere. Now at the bottom of your screen, you should see an add UV sphere here. Click on that. Number of segments, uh, 128 rings 64. This is what Elnu recommends. I would suspect this depends on what your computer can handle. So I think you wanna go for as much as possible. I think, again, not an expert. Uh, radius, I don't know if this makes any difference at all, uh, but I like to just fill up the viewport. So I think three, is about three, four is about right. Something like that. I don't think it really matters. With that done, uh, right click on your sphere and then go to shade smooth. How very pretty, one sphere. So what we wanna do is we wanna take the map we've been drawing in Illustrator, export it and wrap it around this sphere. So back into Illustrator and we wanna take all of our guides with us, I think. Yeah, you want to, we wanna see all of our erogenies, etc., etc. So file, export, export for screens, label it base map, and then hit export. Back in Blender, we're gonna go over to the right here down to this button here, material properties, and we're gonna go new. Then we're gonna scroll down to surface, then click on emissions. And then in color, we're gonna click on the little dot here and then go over to image texture. So then we're gonna hit open and we're gonna load in the base map we just spat out of Illustrator. So locate that here and hit open image. Nothing happens, how sad, let's fix that. Pop up here to the top of the screen and click this button, which I can't make out because my mouse is giant. Uh, so just hit that and hope for the best. There we go, beautiful. And again, we can navigate around, we can look all around our globe, everything's pretty, yada, yada, yada. Oh, and I should stress again, this will only work if you export an equirectangular projection of your world, that is, two to one. Base map you're bringing in has to be twice as wide as it is high. Otherwise, it won't wrap correctly. Okay, now we want to try and draw on this. And what we would like to do is we would like a Blender to treat that which we've just wrapped around this globe as like a base layer. And we want to create like another layer above it that we can draw on and then use that to bounce it out of Blender. So to do this, we'll go to shading because you know, obviously, um, and then we're going to go right click. We're going to, oh no, we're not going to right click. We're going to go shift A to add. And in the search thing here, just type image texture and then just drop it down wherever. So think of the base map here as layer one. This is going to be our, our blank layer two. Drag these two fellers over here. Shift add again or shift A. 
search and then type in mix and click on mix and drop that somewhere in between these boils and these boils. So see the way these two are joined, we're gonna attach them, click on the little node and just drag off. Delightful. Next, you're gonna to come to the mix here and from float, you're gonna to go to color. You're gonna take the color node from base map and you're gonna stick that into mixes A. You're gonna take the color node from image texture and you're gonna stick that into B. Then you're gonna take the alpha from image texture and put that into factor. And then the result from mix goes into color. And then final step is you go to new on image texture and this is the layer you're gonna draw on. So whatever you wanna call it, sketch, whatever. A height and width. Again, this has to be two to one. And I think you should try and make this as big as possible. My base map in Illustrator is 5,000 by 2,500. So I'm just gonna put that in. Then for color, I'm gonna click on color. I'm gonna to go to alpha and I'm gonna just click and drag all the way down till we get to zero. So it's transparent. And then I'm gonna click off that. Make sure alpha is checked and then hit okay. So we have our base map layer, we have our sketch layer, it's getting mixed together and it's getting outputted to produce this. At least that's my understanding of it. Could be totally wrong. And in fact, I think the idea of layers is probably the wrong mental model to have in one's head, but I know nothing about Blender. So here we are. So with that set up, we are now going to go over to texture paint. Now, if your globe is looking a bit stupid, uh, just go over here again and click on uh, the tool that I can't make out and everything should be fine. You see here, we have a viewport for 3D space, and here we have a viewport for what that 3D space is doing, except projected onto a 2D map. Pop up to the top here, and click the little drop down menu, and go to sketch, so it's showing the sketch, which is blank, how wonderful. Okay, so now make sure that you're on the draw tool. Pop on over to the right, you should see draw written here. Select the layer you want to draw on, in our case, that would be sketch. Go down to strength here if you're using a drawing tablet, which you should be. Deselect uh, this icon here. That means the opacity of your stroke will remain constant regardless of pen pressure. Then pop down to color and you may as well just make this a black. And the final thing of housekeeping, go down to fallout here. And if you want a soft brush, keep it as is. If you want a hard brush, which I prefer, uh, change it to this setting here. So hopefully, if we've done everything correctly, we should be able to grab our stylus, pop on over to the globe, and we should be able to make a line and it will automatically project onto our 2D map here. Let's go. Huzzah! Now to get rid of that line, you go Command-Z or Command or Control-Z, wonderful. To change your brush size, use the left square bracket key to make it smaller and the right square bracket key to make it bigger. Now, in theory, there's another way of erasing stuff, just heads up. So if you draw a line, in theory, you should be able to right click, go to where it says mix here and put that to erase alpha. And that you should be able to paint over the line and erase it. Now it's working now, but in my testing, I found that it like was really flaky and I couldn't reliably predict when it would work and when it wouldn't work. That's almost certainly because I'm a total novice at this app. So, you know, just a heads up there. So we'll put that back to mix and that means we're gonna draw positive thing, wonderful. Okay, so let's pop down to a polar region and put this to the test. So I'm gonna come down here, how beautiful. I'm gonna zoom in, how wonderful. Oh, FYI, if you just keep zooming, you'll end up popping through the sphere. So I'm now inside the sphere, don't do that. So I'm just gonna come down a little bit. Uh-oh, I am stuck inside my sphere. What is going on? Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, I'm back. That took way too long. Uh, Google tells me just hit shift C to get rid of that. I think that's like set the camera back to an original state or something. Anyhow, where were we? Pole. Okay, we're going to pole and we're going to zoom in. Careful, Edgar. Okay, pole. I'm going to drop my brush strength down or brush size down to as small as I can get it um, while still maintaining kind of a, a strongish um, black line. Yeah, so one pixel at this zoom level, wonderful. And just for demonstration purposes, let's just draw some sort of shape here. Okay, something like that. Now you'll notice there are gaps in the line and you'll notice that the pixels are kind of doing weird things. I think this is because the pixels are being kind of like 
distorted around the sphere as well. Like if I come around the pole here and draw like a circle, you'll see it has this kind of like um, radial sort of effect, which, you know, it's unfortunate because we're dealing with raster stuff here and not with vectors. Um, so we're just going to have to deal with that. There's not much we can do about it. But in any case, let's imagine that is some amount of uh, elevation. That will now have been copied to this map here. So if I zoom in and try and locate it, it's very hard to see because of the background colors, but there we have it. There is that shape projected out correctly. Now, the only issue is that there's these triangles here that, again, um, not G plates, Blender is using to wrap this uh, around the sphere. For for some reason, um, it cuts out the shape or these, these triangles overlay the shape and it cuts them off. I've not tested it, but it just occurred to me, we could come in here and draw on this plane and like complete the shape here perhaps if we wanted to, but like we're going to be doing that in Illustrator anyway, so I, I don't think there's much need. J just be aware that near the bottom of the map, you run into this issue where it's like segmented. I don't think there's any fix for that. I haven't been able to um, work one out in my testing. All right, so let's say that's done. Then we go up to this feller here. Uh, that's not where I want to go. Uh, not at all, sorry. You go up to this fella here and then you go to save as, and then you just save that somewhere convenient. Delightful. And we may as well save the whole project. So that's file up here and then save as. Okay, and now we pop back into Illustrator. I am going to locate that file we just spat out of Blender. Oh, make sure you save it as a PNG. I'm going to drag and drop and place that onto our map. All right, we'll move that into Guides, Lock Guides, and we can scroll down and see there it is. And from here, it's the same as usual. Select an elevation, come down, N on the keyboard for the pen tool, and then we start painting. So on and so forth, something like that. And you'll end up with, um, insofar as is possible, correctly projected geometries. Obviously, there's going to be issues here with this gapping that occurs and the fact that Blender deals with pixels. And that means the pixels themselves are going to be distorted, leading to varying line thickness, which has some imperfections inherent kind of with that. But overall, you'll be in the kind of right ballpark. And that is basically that. Now, like I said, this is all a big experiment. I've yet to actually do this to completion, so to speak. So I might come to regret these words, but I think the best way of doing this is to do this one elevation step at a time. So go into Blender, mark out all the areas of a certain elevation, export that PNG, put it into Illustrator, trace over it, and then back into Blender, put in the next elevation area, something like that export that out. The reason why I don't think it would be wise to do all the elevations at once is that, again, these lines are quite thick, even at one pixel, and they distort. So you can imagine if you were to come in here with another elevation here, and this one here needs to be really tight, for example, you'll see that it just kind of causes chaos over here. So making each elevation its own PNG, I think, I think is the play here. So we'll go into time lapse now and at the end of it, I'll let you know my thoughts on whether or not this method is in any way useful. Wait, sorry, sorry. One last thing I forgot to mention. Um, brush size is a bit weird in, in Blender, at least from someone who's come from Illustrator, Photoshop, etc. You see here, it's set to one pixel, right? And that means we get lines that are yay thick. But if I zoom out, and still with the brush size set at one pixel and draw some lines, You'll see here that the lines are not the same thickness. We zoom out again, if we were to zoom out really, really far and then go and draw a thing, it's like basically half the globe is covered by a line. I don't think this behavior can be turned off and it's not, oh no, I'm inside my globe again. Okay, shift C, woo, deadly, learn something new. So yeah, I don't think this behavior can be turned off. A, a little bit of Googling tells me that in other modes in Blender, I think it was in the modeling mode, this you can set the, the, the sort of size of your brush to be relative to the viewport and not the zoom level or something nonsense like that. Either way, this is just something you're gonna to have to contend with. But because I would advocate using this to make guides, you don't need to be that precise. The precision will come in Illustrator. So that is that. 
time-lapse mode, Picard topography is a go. I will talk to you in a little bit.
All right. And after all of that, here is where we are at. Maybe just me, but I think Picard is looking pretty tasty. And I gotta say, this blender method, shout out Elnu again, please go show the guy some love, links in the description, is pretty good. Like, it's not perfect. Perfect would be a 3D app that would allow you to work in vector graphics. At least that would be my perfect. Basically G plates, but with the ability to be able to draw and not just place vertices. But short of such an app existing, this is probably the best method I've come across to deal with polar distortion if you're gonna hand draw things. Again, not perfect. Like overall on the macro scale, the morphology is is good. It doesn't look, you know, broken and artifacty. But when we zoom in, because the pixels are being distorted, there are artifacts down here, but it's really like, it's really not too bad and can be mitigated somewhat by not having a ton of detail really tight into the pole. So I like this, it's got my vote of confidence. Definitely gonna be using it for when we talk about fjords up here in the Northern polar regions. So before I go, um, we'll do a quick stock take here, just figure out what's happening next. I think the next step I'm gonna do off camera because it's hella boring and just is an extension of everything we have talked about. And that is, I'd like to do a bit of blending. You'll notice that we've dropped in all of our orogenies here. We've taken our G-plate stuff and we've converted into our Atlas map uh, style world map, great. But we've ignored the cratonic areas here, the areas with big ass cratons, and they haven't got any attention. Such that we're in a situation where we have these vast, vast, extremely flat, extremely low lying planes, which, you know, is fine, but it's not something we see on earth, at least not to this extent. Like this here is earth. I'm sure we're all familiar with it. If I raise the sea levels up by a hundred meters, Everything that's kind of this, I guess, light purple here is crustal material between zero and 100 meters in elevation. And you can see it doesn't make up a huge portion of the globe. And if you compare that to what I got, this teal color makes up a massive portion of the globe. So I need to do some sculpting in here. Effectively, what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat the cratons as being like effectively flat because that's what they would be, but with a slight like dome shaped elevation as in they're higher in their middle and then use that to blend them into the topography some more. It's all pretty mundane. I don't think it needs to be on video. So after I have that done, then it's on to seafloor topography, which I can't decide whether or not that should be a video or not. I find it hard to gauge whether people be interested in that. So I wanna leave an informal poll in the comments, seafloor topography on video, yay or nay. Leave me your thoughts. All right, I hope you enjoyed. Have a great one, folks, and until next time, Edgar Grouse.